Welcome back. Missy Heydrich here at the 2024 Big 12 Women's Basketball Media Day. Now joined by coaches and players from West Virginia. Picked fourth in the Big 12 preseason poll and number 16 in the AP preseason poll as well. Mark Kellogg, second year at West Virginia. And he is joined by senior guard J.J. Quinterly, junior guard Jordan Harrison, and redshirt senior guard Kyle Watson. Coach, you're one in the books in Morgantown for you. Um, the ups and downs of that season, but yet the trajectory absolutely going up for your program. What did you take from year one as you go into year two? Well, probably quite a bit. Um, we were fortunate to put together a really solid season that um, also fortunately had more ups than downs, um, but a credit really to the players and, and they bought into the process and, and I think the vision fairly early. Um, which just allowed us to coach, um, but they were tight knit group. Um, they were fun. They were easy to go to work with every day. Um, and then I, I thought they bought into to really how we wanted to play. And we had that defensive identity. I thought earlier in the year, I thought we got better and better as the year went on, um, to get to the NCAA tournament was one of our goals to advance was one of our goals. And then obviously everybody's talked about the Iowa game and, and I thought we defended well enough to win the game. Just didn't quite have enough offensively that night. Um, and then coming into this one, I, I think I've said what a difference a year makes. It feels better. We had a foreign trip over the summer that I thought really helped the new group. Um, so just hopefully a little bit of, uh, of, of the same and then see if we can't even advance a little bit more. Well, you mentioned it 25 and eight overall 12 and six a year ago in the big 12, that NCAA tournament appearance defense is the name of the game. You are the top returning defensive team in this league. You allow just over 57 points a game in conference games. How have things been going in practice? How did that summer trip help in really solidifying the defensive mentality for this group? Yeah, well, I think, you know, we, we have a lot of really good defenders. I think the three here to my left were maybe top three or four in the league in steals. And, you know, and we did turn people over at a high rate. We're trying to be a little careful just being defined by the defensive end. Um, when we looked at all the numbers last year, we were, you know, in that top five or ten in the country defensively, depending on what metrics you look at, and about 40th in offense. And we want to get a little bit better on the offensive end to match what we are capable of on the defensive end. Um, you know, we're still a work in progress this time of year because it, it, it's so early. But I think you'll see, again, we'll, we'll still play a similar, a similar way. Um, the summer just gives you those ten practices when you have the foreign trip just to get a head start. And, and really, for me, it wasn't to watch again these guys because I know what they're capable of. It was more of the newcomers and, and just trying to get them up to speed as quickly as we could. Uh, J.J. Quinterly, preseason All-Big 12 selection. You were a first-team All-Big 12 pick last year in the defensive team, the 2024 Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. As Coach said, defense might be what you all hang your hat on. No coaching change for you that you had to manage in the offseason. So what was your offseason focus? Where did you look at that and say, this is where I can be better moving forward? Uh, I focused more on my release, releasing the ball quicker and catch-and-shoot threes and Dribbling, dribbling to my three-point shot, shooting behind uh, screens. Just getting that third level of my game a little better. As you think about how defense can create offense for yourself, um, what is it about kind of that defensive mentality that you have? Because i got to be honest, not everybody really likes to play defense that much. You seem to really like it. Uh, I think uh, my defense leads to my offense. If I'm playing good on defense, I'm probably going to go and transition where I'm good at and score the ball. So just that desire to want to do it, honestly. Well, I hope that rubs off on young kids because not everybody likes to play <laughs> defense. Uh, Jordan Harrison, your first year at West Virginia, you were a second team All-Big 12 selection and part of the All-Big 12 defensive team as well. You were a newbie last year in the Big 12 after you transferred in. You braced that challenge. What did you learn about the Big 12, and what did it teach you about your game and where you need to be? Yeah, I mean, definitely uh, last year I learned a lot, considering it was my first season. Uh, the game here, the Big 12, is a little bit more, you know, aggressive and physical, but that's the kind of game that I play. So I was able to adjust pretty quick, uh, play pretty fast, and, you know, I play fast as well. So the adjustment was, you know, pretty easy, pretty seamless. Um, I would say uh, it showed me that I fit right in and that I still have, you know, things to work on, but um, I was able to, you know, compete and, you know, we still, you know, were able to win. So, yeah. 
Kai Watson, one of the veterans, not only at West Virginia, but now in this league. You started all 33 games a year ago, a year ago the top rebounder for this West Virginia squad. Not everybody's able to play, let alone advance in the NCAA tournament. How do you guys use last year's experiences, your past experiences, as motivation? Um, I just think that um, we had a pretty good season last year. Um, and I think we want to continue to keep growing on that, um, you know, improve. Obviously, those numbers probably are scoring, like Coach had said. So just continuing to get better and hopefully have a good season. In terms of, I always think that NCAA experience is one that it's hard to tell new players or young players that come in what it's really like. But is that a motivator? Can you share with them and say, hey, this is something we've been at. We want to do this again. Yeah, I feel like um, that's everybody's goal is to make it to the NCAA tournament and um, especially just keep advancing, you know, winning games. So that's our goal, especially this year, you know, continue to win those games at the tournament. No doubt. Check more boxes, as Coach said, right? You just keep going. We've got some questions, I believe, from our media out here, and we will bring you a microphone. We've got one right up here in the front. And here comes the mic. Coach Matthew Poston's Heartland College Sports. Um, seems like the one area where you added players, added depth, was your front court. You've still got Kylie, but how do uh, how does Celia and Jordan fit into, and Danielle as well, how are those three people going to fit into your rotation up front? Uh, fouls. They all got five. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, we, ha we have just more balance and depth in there that we just didn't really have a year ago and you know within the big 12 you i think you need to be versatile in the post position you you get some of the the dominant low you know back to basket low posts you still have some that you know kylie types that can step out and stretch and shoot it and so i think you we just need to have options um depending on what the game calls for um what we need i joke about the fouls but if you may need them you know you never know um but yeah we have balance and depth now we're much deeper than we were a year ago um I, i'm kind of asking some of those players to separate themselves from the competition you know internally to to see who wants to take kind of the reins and and own some of it and so we're going to work through that here over the next few weeks and early in the season but um certainly like those kids and what they bring to the team Coach, the Big 12, as you know and you learned last year and everybody knows, it's a grind. And now we add more teams and it looks different than it did a year ago. But as you think about preparing for conference play, how did you look at your non-conference and say, these are the things we want to accomplish, these are the challenges we want to have, and put you in a position as you think long-term, postseason, where you are when that bracket comes out? Yeah, I think scheduling is a tricky, it's tricky. I think you always want to develop if you can put the schedule together based on the team that you think you will have, you know, coming back. And sometimes it's done years ahead. So you don't have that luxury. Uh, we wanted to beef it up a little bit. I thought we got knocked in our seating, um, potentially, I guess, based on some of the non-conference games. Um, you know, and so I think we've beefed it up a little bit. There's some potential, you know, top 15 type matchups in there. Um, but I think it's also about developing an identity, winning games, learning what winning is like um, to prepare us for the Big 12. And then again, it's, yeah, you're trying to set yourself up for, you know, postseason success and NCAA tournament seedings. And, you know, we said we played in a crazy cool environment at Iowa a year ago. And if that's the way the rules are and the NCAA has it set up, then let's see if we can't go be a top 16 team in the country and maybe get a home game in Morgantown, West Virginia, and see what that um, environment would be like. That's a really good goal, and I think one I'm sure all of your players have. I'd ask you before we go one more question. Uh, the question was about your front court, but the back court uh, really seemed to gel together a year ago. How important it is will it be for them to, in terms of who has your ball handling responsibilities, um, how you kind of dish that out a little bit and give them more options maybe off the ball in a better scoring positions? Yeah, well, no. I mean, we go as kind of these two go to my left. And, uh, you know, I got here. They're, they're smaller guards. And a lot of people are like, are you going to, can you play them together? Or are they going to have to start and back up? And like, oh, no, we're playing them together and we're going to figure it out. And, you know, it proved to work just fine. And uh, no, they play off of each other. I mean, Jordan, I guess, would be more of the primary ball handler. But JJ has the ball in her hands as much um, as Jordan does as, you know, as, as our leading scorer and, and one of the nation's best scorers. So we're, we're going to play off, let them play off of each other. I think they're 
they're more comfortable with each other. Um, you know, Jordan can play off the ball if she needs to a little bit, if JJ's going, or that's a matchup that we like. So it's a luxury for me to have them. Um, but it's also because they play so hard on the defensive end. You know, these two have bought into what it takes to defend. Um, they're elite on the ball defenders, elite off the ball. Um, you know, Jordan took, I don't know, 30, 40 charges a year ago. Um, you know, and so they're just, when they'll do that, and if we're going to press and they're at the top of it, then the other three on the team don't have much of a choice but to kind of join in and, and play with that same energy and effort. So uh, we will still go as, you know, as this group goes, but they're certainly the heads, head of the snake, as we call them. Well, great leadership, good veterans at the front, a lot of depth coming back for West Virginia. Wish you, all of you, the very best as this season progresses.